Hello coders, my name is Adiv from Team Coder Z and I'm going to show you today how to navigate your virtual robot using Coder Z. So let's start. The first thing we need to understand is that we have two wheels. This is the left wheel connected to the left motor and we have a right wheel connected to the right motor. And to move the robot around we need to sync both motors. A, there are a few ways of doing so and let's start by how do we drive the robot straight forward. The easiest way is to use the drive block. The drive block as is, is already configured to drive the robot at full speed ahead. This is the power setting of 100 and the direction set to forward. So if we run the code, we see that the robot is moving nicely along a straight line. And here we left a nice pink trail. Now, this, is, this happens because both motors are running at the same speed. We can do so not only using the drive block, but also using two separate motor blocks. So let's duplicate the motor block, change one of them to the right motor. Now we have both the left and the right motors driving forward at top speed. Let's hit play and we, we should see the same exact reaction. The robot will drive in a straight line. So that is easy. Driving in a straight line would require both motors to drive forward at the same time. Now what happens if we stop one motor? I'll set the right motor to zero, meaning it will not drive at all. And let's run this code and see how it goes. Zooming in, we can see that the right motor is indeed standing still. Let me try and get a better view. This is the right motor, it's not rotating at all. While the left motor boop, 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 is turning constantly. Let me try and lower the speed of the left motor so we'll get a better view of it and run it again. So what happens is that since only the left motor is rotating, the robot is actually pivoting around the right wheel. That would be the center of the circle that is uh, revolving on. So operating only one motor will create a pivot turn around the standstill motor. From top view, we can see it even better and I'll rerun the code. So you can see this is the center around which the robot is turning. If I flip it, meaning I'll stop the left motor and give some power to the right motor, then it's going to turn to the left. The turn will always be towards the slower motor. In this case, it's the left motor as its speed is set to zero. So we can clearly see now that the robot is turning towards the left, but only the right motor is running. So we can drive forward and we can do some pivot turns. What would happen if I flip the power or the direction of one of the motors? For example, the left motor will go backward while the right motor will go forward. This will result in what we call a screw turn or a point turn. There's not much big difference between the two uh, turns, the pivot and the screw. The center of the rotation is going to be just between the two wheels and both motors will be working. So let's do this. Let's move the robot a little bit to the side and now let's run it again. It's not going to draw a circle, it's just going to leave a dot in the center of the rotation. So we can go forward in a straight line, we can draw a circle and we can also leave a point behind us. As you can see, it was here below the blue line this was a, a result of the screw turn. What would happen if both motors are running? For example, the left motor is at top speed, but the right motor is slightly slower, let's say 75. So both of them are moving forward, let's fix that. So it should be in a forward direction, but the right motor is a little bit slower, so it's going to take the robot slightly leaning to the right. Uh, and the result will be a curved turn. If we zoom out, we can see that the result is going to be a circle around a very a big radius. So this is another type of turn, this is a curved turn. And the idea is that the way that we uh, differentiate the motors in direction and speed would create all those kinds of turns. We can easily achieve all these, all these maneuvers using just the drive block. But we need to open the drive setting block and click on set steering. This will open a new 
parameter called steering. Steering works like this. It determines the difference between the, mo the power of the left and right motor. If we set it to zero, both motors, left and right, will get a speed of 100. So if I run this code, you will see that the robot will go in a straight line because both motors are driving the same direction, same speed. If I increase steering to a positive number, then the robot is going to turn to the right. At a power, at a steering of 50, it's going to do a pivot turn, meaning one robot, one motor will stop. In this case, the right motor is the one that stops. If we decrease the number, but not below zero, let's say 20, then it's closer to zero, meaning it's going to be closer to a straight line. It's going to be a curved turn, but the radius is going to be bigger. So actually, this, the lower the number, the bigger the radius of the turn is going to be. And at zero, it's a straight line, meaning the radius is, there's no radius, there's no circle, uh, we can also say this, the radius is infinity. Uh, so now we have a, a bigger curve, a wider curve that is, with a bigger radius than we had for steering of 20. The steering can go all the way up to 100, and uh, maybe you've guessed it, if 50 was a pivot turn, then 100 will give us that screw point, screw turn or point turn. So using steering, we can, we can create all those kind of turns, curve turn, pivot turns, and uh, uh, point turns or screw turns. Um, if we give it a negative value, then we get the same type of turning only to the left. So remember, if you want to turn left, you need a negative steering value. Minus 100, it will screw turn to the left. Minus 50, it's going to pivot to the left. And any other value uh, will create it to curve uh, towards the left if it's a negative number. So and the bigger the number, the tighter the turn. For example, at a steering of minus 85, minus means it will turn to the left. 85 means that the, tight, the turn will be very tight. Uh, and we can see that it almost looks like a point turn. Now, one way of, of seeing this in action is with a little code that I prepared just before. Let's bring it here from the, from the dip. So we'll have a closer look at this code and see what it means. I've set a, a variable called steering and set it to zero and created a loop that repeats 100 times. And what's, what's going to happen is that each time it's going to update the steering value uh, to increase it by one. So this will change the value of the variable steering to add an increment of one. It starts with zero. So the first time the code executes steering is zero, so straight line. Then after 500 milliseconds, just half a second, it's going to repeat this loop and update the steering value to one, then two, then three, then four. So what we're going to do is create a, 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 a turn that is becoming tighter and tighter every half a second. So let's, uh, let's see it in action. I'll clear the scene just so we have a, a clear um, scene without all the lines from before. Um, I will manually move the robot a little bit to the side just to give it enough room to spiral and, and we're going to, to, to see that, that beautiful spiral that comes when the radius of the turn starts from infinity, straight line, and then goes um, um, uh, smaller and smaller, the, the radius that is. So let's zoom out a little bit and let's hit play and see how this goes. Um, oop, I forgot one thing. Uh, let's add a line. So we can see how that looks like. Using trail is very is very good uh, to um, uh, explain or show things, but also to look at how things behaved uh, as it leaves the mark on the floor. So trail is a very useful block. Uh, so as you can see, the turn it started in a straight line, but now the turn is getting oops too much zoom uh, is getting tighter and tighter. And eventually, it's going to spiral inside the scene. So the reason that it doesn't look so much like turns but straight lines it's because of the, the, the uh, resolution that I'm using to record the video. But on your screen, a program like this, it would look flawless. Okay, so as you can see, we can use the trail to show how the robot moves. But in terms of, of steering it or controlling it, we can do everything with the drive block. Steering equals zero, it will go in a straight line. That's the default value. If we increase steering, it's going to go to the right. 
if we decrease it, it's going to turn to the left. Values of 50 and minus 50, 50 will create a pivot turn to the right and to the left. And a steering value of 100 or minus 100 will create a, a, a point turn or a screw turn to the right or to the left. Any other number will result in a curved turn. The higher the steering value, the tighter the turn is going to be. So I hope you enjoyed this, enjoyed this video and let us know in the comments if there are additional videos that you want us to do explaining different things uh, in Coder Z. Farewell and may the code be with you.